how many of you read in James 3 that the devils believe God and they tremble? They believe, but they tremble. Would you like to make the devil tremble today? I'm going to show you how. Hebrews 10, verse 25. Take it 24. And let us consider one another and provoke one another unto love. And to good works. The word provoke there is not a bad word. It means to encourage. And this is my main text. Which will be explained by a text in the Old Testament. Not forsaking. The assembling of ourselves. Together. Say it together. As. The manner of some is. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the coming of the Lord is at hand. I love my Jamaican people. <laughs> Thank you for your help. I need it. Isn't, is attending church important? Maybe the word church attendance is a turn off for some people. So I wouldn't be using church attendance. What I will be using is gathering, assembling. Where two or three are gathered, the word there also means assembled. Where two or three are gathered or assembled in my name, I am in the midst. There's a certain attraction of the supernatural when we assemble in his name. Which brings me to my topic. When we assemble, devils tremble. That's the power of assembling. The devil is scared when we get together. Because there is one that will chase a thousand, but two will put 10,000 to flight. Watch me. These five fingers, each one of them valuable. Each one of them have the place, the size, the, the position. But one finger here couldn't lift what five fingers can, can lift. Okay? But. Take them together. Put them together. And you have a force that your opponent will have to reckon with. There is strength in togetherness. Together we are stronger. I want to encourage you to attend the gathering more often if you can. There are times when you can't, you're not well, you have to work, things popped up, your car couldn't start, and so you had difficulty getting to the house. But you love the Lord and you love his house. Somebody said to me this week, Pastor, I don't need to come to church because I have God inside of me. Well, I would like to liken the church as unto a gas station. How many of you go, to, almost all of you go to a gas station? You don't go live there. You don't go and hang out by the gas station. I just like to smell gas. You go, you fill up, and you go your way. That is what church should be. You come, you get filling, you get blessed, you get happy, you get strength to make it through the week. And if you need some tapping up gas, come Wednesday night. Hallelujah. My theme, which I'm going to show you from the Old Testament text, Samuel, 1 Samuel 11, that's going to explain 
Hebrews 10.25. But just before I get into that part, not forsaking. The word forsake means to abandon, to neglect, to disown, and to re rebel against the scriptural admonition and biblical authority. That's the meaning of forsake. And when you totally give up church and say, I don't need church because I have God, you have erred seriously. And so this is what happens. When you miss one Sunday, it becomes easier to miss the next Sunday. And when you miss two or three Sundays, then it's so easy to miss church that you will miss it and not feel it. The conscience seems to get hard. And the heart seems to grow cold. As I will show you in a minute. So another person told me, Pastor, I like, I told my wife, said, I just like watching church on TV. I, I can cook, I can do laundry, I can clean my kitchen, and I can sing home, and I can watch the TV and enjoy it as much as I'm here. Well, let me show you the difference between here and there. And my team is, there is here. I want to show you that mysteriously so right now, but there is here. Think on that until I explain it. The difference being near church, away from church, and in church is like this. Ladies, you will understand this. Men might. You, you make a dough, you're going to bake a cake. Whatever kind, black cake, sponge cake. You're going to make a cake and you, you have the dough and you put it in the pan. Uh, let's assume this is the pan and the dough is in it and this is the oven. Ladies, the counter is here. So you, you have all the ingredients, everything is mixed in the pan and you put it near the oven. And you turn up the heat in the oven. Do you think that that will affect the cake sitting on the table? The point is that the cake has to be in the oven, not near the oven, not looking at the oven, but in the oven. And that's the difference between home and church. Because the spirit of the church is different from the spirit of the home. We have a fake fireplace that comes up on TV and you hear the crackling of the sound and you, the fire is, but it does not give heat. And you could watch TV all day long and you will not feel the heat of the presence of God as when you get together. Because we give and we take from each other. Forsake not the assembling of yourself as the manner of some. The word manner means habit. As the habit. It's a habit. And it's a bad habit. There are 100 and, tell me if God is unreasonable. Tell me if any one of us here is unreasonable. There are 168 hours in the week. Whether you're rich or poor, young, old, good or bad, everybody gets the same 168 hours. You come here for two hours. Is it wrong? Is it unrealistic? Is it unreasonable to ask you to come two hours out of 168 hours for your own benefit? Is it unreasonable? But because we have wrong priorities, and the conscience dies slowly, and we lose conviction for the house of God, so we lose love. And when that love is lost, 
the heart gets cold. So, the word assembly is a biblical word. Deeper life assembly can also be called deeper life congregating, deeper life assembling, deeper life gathering. Hebrews 10 at 12, 5 shows clearly, 12, 23, that the word assembly is important. Twelve, twenty, three, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, Sit, seated in heaven. The church is called an assembly. It's the assembly of the firstborn. As long as you are born again, your place is in the house of the Lord. Psalm, one, Psalm 92 says that you might love the house of the Lord. That you might be established in the house of the Lord. So before I go to Samuel, let me say again, the verse I quoted, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking, do not forsake, do not abandon, do not give up, do not neglect the congregating, the, the assembling, the, the togetherness, the, the gathering with a purpose. Uh, I hope your purpose is right in coming to church. Some people come for the wrong reason. You will not know what people look at when they come to church. Amazing. I'm not saying you have to be blind and not look around and see what's wrong and need to be fixed. I'm saying that's not the purpose of coming to church. Coming to church is first to cast your eyes on Jesus. I'll show you that just, and to have fellowship one with another. This thing about as soon as the service is finished, I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to meddle. You're not meddling with people's business when you give them a hug, a handshake, and say, God bless you. I am praying for you. That's not business. That's fellowship. We need the koinonia. We need the getting together. I know you're tired with people and their stuff and their nonsense that they will talk to you, but just love them. They just want an, a listening ear. And I think our ears need to be bigger than our mouths. You believe that? Okay. Two ears, one mouth, yeah. Okay, let's go. To the text in Samuel. Samuel, the 13th chapter. I will just read quickly. This is, these are three sermons in this chapter, so I don't want to get involved in it. I just want the last uh, few, word, uh, few verses. 14 and 15 is really what I want. But to get there, I'll give you the backdrop. Then Nahash, first one, the Ammonite. The word Nahash means snake. The snake came up against Jabesh Gilead. And the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, well, look, make a covenant and we will serve you. First problem, first problem. Do not make covenants with evil. Have no dealings with the snake. Keep away from the powers of darkness. Resist the devil and he will, he will run from you. Why? Because he knows the power you have. And if Christians would only realize how powerful we are and what a dynamite we become when we come together and explode in his face, we'll realize the power of the assembly. So Nahash the snake said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a covenant with you on one condition. That I might dig out your right eye and reproach Israel. Why the right eye? This is the reason. In those days, they, were, they used body shields. A shield that would shield you from head to toe for arrows. But they would leave the right 
eyes, a space in the right eye so you can protect the rest of your body but see with the right eye. So the snake knows that. He wanted to dig out their right eyes so that they will be militarily crippled and that they would lose vision and that they will not be able to fight well. If you can't see the enemy, you can't fight well. Don't let the enemy dig out your eyes. Make no covenant with the blind. Have your eyes and watch unto God and let the Spirit of the Lord lead you. So they said, look, give us seven days. Let's think about this. If there's nobody to help us, we'll be a slave. I have news for you, you know. Never say there is no one to help me. Never say I am alone and I'm struggling under the threat of the enemy and I am by myself. Never say that because you need to know your family. The church of Jesus Christ here God is on your side and you have powerful people with you. You're not alone. Fear not the threat of the snake, of the serpent king. Then Saul came in the camp and he heard this great weeping and wailing. He said, what's the matter? Well, what's happening here? You know, when people are struggling and they're burdened and they're crying, we need to investigate. We need to ask, well, what's happening? He didn't know and they told him. And verse 6, Verse 5, he said, what aileth the people? Why are they weeping? They told him the tidings of the Gibeonites. Watch this. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings and his anger was kindled against the enemy. He took a yoke of oxen too and hewed them in pieces. I don't know how he did it, but I understand how Samson could kill a lion with his bare hands. And I could understand that when the spirit of power come upon a man, he's changed into a giant. He's changed into somebody strong. Saul didn't have natural strength to do this. The difference in our walk is not how tall we are. He was tall and taller than anybody else. The difference is how much the spirit of God is upon us. We get the power from the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by, to- by, by how tall you are, not how wealthy you are. It is by my Spirit, saith the Lord. And may it always be so in this church that the Spirit of God will do what we cannot do. I could go into the application of the oxen uh, typifying Calvary, but I, I don't have time for that. Because of Calvary, all other victories is possible. So he sent news to them. He numbered the children of Israel, 300,000 and 30 from Judah, 330,000 men. And now when they were gathered, not everybody came. And you will see later on that those who Realized what victory was won, complained to Saul and said, why didn't you invite me? You see, you can't please somebody else. He sent the message throughout the coast of Israel. Everybody was invited. Some of them, 33,000 came, 330,000 came. But those who didn't come got angry. Sometimes we have an event. We post up notices. We send out invitation and they didn't show up. And the herd, we had a grand time. And then we'll say, nobody told me. Liar! <laughs> and when, verse 9, they said unto the messengers, and this is why I'm going to give you some encouragement. Say to the men of Jabesh, prophesy to them. Tell them not to worry about yesterday. Think about what's going to happen tomorrow. And he said, tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you will have help. 
I have news for you. Help is on the way. The enemy have threatened you. You will lose your car. Help is on the way. The enemy said you won't be able to pay your rent. Help is on the way. The enemy said your marriage is failing. Help is on the way. I have good news for you in the face of bad news. Let the enemy threaten. Let him come against you. The army of the Lord here will fight for you. Hallelujah. In prayer and praise and intercession. Help is on the way. Tomorrow by this time it's going to get hot. It's going to get so hot the devil will run. Because when we assemble. Devils. And let me go into the last portion here. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is it that said Saul shall reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. Don't be quick to kill people. Don't be quick to write people off. So because there were some people opposing Saul as king because he was anointed but not crowned. And so that I could, I could talk a lot about that. Jesus was anointed in his ministry but was not crowned until later. Some people want the crown before the cross. There is no crown before the cross except a crown of thorns. And if you've been wearing a crown of thorns, he will exchange that for a crown of glory and a crown of happiness. Thou crownest my head with loving kindness and with tender mercies, O God. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a crown waiting, Paul said, for me and for you. Hallelujah. Could you say praise the Lord? Now, let's go to Gilgal. Gilgal will represent the church. That's why I said, there is a place called there, but there is here. And so I said, nobody will die today. I am saying not one of you will die today. Spiritually, nor physically, nor financially. Financial, you shall live. Amen. Confess it. Say, I will live. I will, live. I will prosper. I will, I will be healed. I will be an example. I have a testimony. Oh, the Lord saw nothing because today salvation is wrought in this congregation. Today there is saving of souls. Today there is saving of marriages. Today there is saving of businesses. Today there is salvation. Now let's go to Gilgal. Gilgal in Samuel's day became his headquarters. And it was part of a circuit that he would visit. But he made Gilgal the headquarters simply because when they crossed the Jordan they took out 12 stones from the Jordan and they made an altar in Gilgal and there they began to worship Jehovah so Gilgal was the gathering place Gilgal was the watering hole Gilgal was the place of convocation and assembling let's go to Gilgal and see why you go to church why there, as he's saying, there, said there, three times, there, I am saying, is here. So you just imagine your home, and you, you wasn't able to meet, and you say, I wish I was there, meaning church. Samuel said to the people, come. I am saying to you, come. Come to church. Come as that young man. Come as Jason told me, he said, Uncle, I have missed church twice in 10 years. Stephen Covey, who wrote the best-selling seven marks of a successful person. One chapter is dedicated to family church attendance. And he stated, although he was busy in the army 
and, and doing so many things, he took his family to church consecutively for 44 years and never missed a Sunday. He said, that's one of the secrets of successful family raising. When you raise your children in church, you won't have to raise them in the court. Come, I invite you to come. Make church gathering, make church fellowship a priority. Not a second guess. Not if I have time. Don't treat the Lord like that. He didn't treat you like that. He doesn't put you second. He doesn't put you when he have time. Come. You're invited. Let us go. Not me alone. Not you alone. Us. Let us go to Gilgal. Let us go to where we can meet together and where we can have fellowship. And look at some things that's going to happen at Gilgad. And I'm finishing with this. And I have a one, one illustration after. Let us go to church and renew the kingdom there. Church is a place of renewal. What, whatever you have done in the past and you feel that you lagged and you feel a little stale... Come to church and renew your relationship with the king and his kingdom. It's a place of renewal, rededication. Come, come, come and renew. Feel new again. Put away the old. Some people stumble at what took place in the past. Don't let the past stumble you and hinder your future. Come, renew. Renew at this altar today. Make a new confession. Gilgal of the church is a place of renewal. Let's go renew the kingdom. And the people went to Gilgal. Secondly, and there they made Saul king before the Lord. I was telling you, the main reason of coming to church is to make Jesus Lord of Lords and recognize that he is King of Kings. When we come here, we don't promote anybody. We don't call titles and say this and that. We come here to celebrate, to acknowledge, and to admit that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, King of Kings, the only potentate, the only wise God. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. We come here to make Jesus king. Thirdly, and well, well look, there they made Saul king, and there they made sacrifice. They didn't, sorry, they didn't make, they sacrifice sacrifices. That's a double emphasis. When, when, when you have a little and you need it for yourself and you sacrifice that, you're sacrificing a sacrifice which God will honor. And when you come to church, it doesn't matter how much you bring. We're not into the amount as somebody said, the Sermon on the Mount has become the Sermon of the Amount. We're not into the amount. We are into you bringing a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of gladness, a sacrifice of joy, a sacrifice of a good spirit. You don't come through them doors with your mouth swell up. And your hand behind your back like you're Napoleon. No. You come in to enter the case with thanksgiving in your heart and with joy in your soul and you look happy to make others happy. Oh, there is kingship and lordship in the house of the Lord, Gilgal. Here we make him king. Here we offer sacrifices of peace. Peace offerings before the Lord. If there is no peace between you and God, there will never be peace between you and people. You know why you're always fighting people and people always fighting you? Because you're always fighting with God. The day you stop fighting God 
and make peace with God in your life, in your sinful relationship, and in your doubts, that's the day when peace will flood your soul, and you will have peace, you will give peace, and you will love peace. And some people don't like peace. They love trouble. They love to gossip. They want to cause confusion. Ah, blessed are the confusion makers. I didn't read that. I heard blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. A mark that marks you as a child of God is that you are a peacemaker. You love peace. And you will do anything to see peace in the church. Not pieces, peace. And they offered sacrifice. And it might just be a sacrifice for you to make peace. It might cost you something. And so they offered sacrifices. Before the Lord. Not before the eyes of men. And there, Saul... And all the men of Israel rejoice greatly. Gilgal, the church, is a place of great rejoicing. I love when we come here together and we rejoice. And we lift our hands and we praise. This is what the house of... You can't really do it effectively at home. You do it here in the congregation of the saved. In the assembly of the firstborn. In those that are spirit-filled and of like-mindedness. We come to bring great rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Help is on the way. We can scatter the enemy when we group together. We don't have to live under his threat. And we don't have to bargain with him and make covenants with darkness. You don't go and, con and consult your horoscope to find out what's happening today. Why do you think they call it horoscope? You consult the word of God. You hear from the spirit of the living God. Today, Saul said, nobody's going to die. Nothing is going to perish. You have an invitation from Samuel. Come, uh, let us go. A walk of togetherness. Uh, Gilgal is a place of renewal. Gilgal is a place of sacrifice. Gilgal is a place to make Jesus king. Gilgal is a place of peace. And Gilgal, the church, is a place of great rejoicing. Is it important to come to church? Is it necessary to come to church? Well, let me close with this illustration. Because there's fire and power when we get together. There was this young man who, in the winter, went to his pastor and said, Pastor, you know, I, I, I don't feel church is necessary. I don't think I need to come to church. Pastor didn't say anything. They were sitting in front of the fireplace. The pastor took the tongue and took out one of the biggest pieces of coal flaming hot, took it out from the other pieces of coal and laid it on the side. Didn't say a word. The young man watched. The coal slowly lost its flame. Until within five, ten minutes, it died. Because it was alone. I don't care how rich, how educated. God doesn't care about these things. How hot you are. It's how together you stay. When your fire meets my fire and my fire mingle with your fire, your fire will never go out. And the love of many will wax cold because we have left the assembly. We have left the congregation. We have abandoned it. We have neglected it. We have willfully forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. Let me tell you, devil is trembling right now because all you lovely people are here to make Jesus Lord. You are here to bring peace. You are here to worship. You are here to give God the glory. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to Jesus. When we assemble, devils tremble. Let's make him quake in his boots. 
Let's make him shake and shiver in Jesus' name. Hey, Lord, we praise your name. Lift them voices. Lift them voices and give him praise. Come on, lift them voices. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 For the devils believe and tremble. He's trembling right now. Keep him trembling all week long. He's a coward. He's not only a liar, he's a loser. Every time you come to house, he lost something. Don't give him win. Don't live under his threats. No matter how hard he threatens you, there's help is on the way. Praise the Lord. Come on, who's coming up? May the fire of our altars never burn.